Belamkonda. I work for Network Solutions as the Social Media Swami. My unofficial title is Director of Social Media Strategy. The point, I'm a linchpin because I read a lot of books and if I can inspire any one of you to volunteer to Debbie after this saying that you will speak impromptu, I would have achieved my objective. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to say is, it's very confusing about uh, every time you read a book you wonder if you, what is the point of the book. Like if you read Tim Ferriss book which says 4 hour work week, say, hey, I'm only going to work for four hours and I become a millionaire and go to the Caribbean. Or, you read Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers, which says that everybody who's become famous has worked hard and the magic number is 10,000 hours. Whether it's Bill Gates, whether it's Beatles or anybody else. And at the same time, you find all these smart people who are telling you, don't work hard, work smart. So, what do you do? And along comes a book, it's called Winchpin. And the book exactly tells you, you have to always strive to learn on your own. You have to always strive to be the lone voice. But if you're in a company and you're in a meeting, 18 people have agreed to something, one person doesn't care, is probably fast asleep. You can be the 20th person who says, no, I think this is the reason why I disagree with all of you. That's a very tough job to do. Just like the book talks about fear of speaking in public. I used to have a fear of speaking in public. I used to be a chef in my previous life and now I'm the social media swami for a technology company. You have to use the opportunity as it arrives to you. And the book says exactly the same thing in terms of fear. How did I start speaking in public? I used to always carry five slides with me because I said like, maybe I'll practice in the bathroom. But at the same time, I went to a grassroots event and said like, uh, I saw an empty spot there and said, can I speak? And they said, sure, nobody else is there. We don't know if anybody will come to your uh, session or not. 60 people came to the session just because the title was interesting. Somebody uh, videotaped it and it went all over the internet and 2,500 people saw it other than the people who were. So my message to all of you is, if you're doing something repeatedly all the time, outsource it to somebody else. IBM, not everybody in IBM got laid off, but people who decided that their life was they will go to work at 9 o'clock and come back at 5 o'clock and do the same thing over and over again and it will give them job security were wrong. So what that teaches us is always decide on what you want to do and how you want to do it. One of the things about not moving your cheese, nobody else is going to do it for you. Everything is, has got to come from you. You've got to learn it on your own. Uh, in, in terms of when you come here, everybody has to believe in themselves to say like, this is what I do better than everyone else. And the lizard brain is the person who says that somebody else is going to do the innovation and I'm just going to keep continuing to do my job. That's not going to work. It's not work for entrepreneurs, it won't work for companies either. Richard Branson's story that's mentioned in the book. If you if you're on a Caribbean vacation and your flight gets cancelled, don't call mom and say, mom, I can't come because uh, my flight is cancelled. What Richard Branson did is walked over to the uh, chartered uh, counter and said, how much does it cost to charter a flight back to wherever he was going? And he heard the amount, he took a board, a piece of paper and said, $39 for a seat back to, let's say, New York from uh, Puerto Rico. And he got people to sign up for $39, chartered the flight, went back there. That's a precursor to starting uh, Virgin Atlantic Airways. So if somebody drops a, a cupcake here, you should be the one who wants to pick it up and don't think like somebody else is going to do it. And real life story, I was standing outside the 7-Eleven, there's this person who was clearly injured. And he had a patch and he kept on asking people, uh, my house is half a mile down the road. Can you uh, give me a ride? Everybody said, I'm busy, I have a meeting, I can't do this, I'm sorry, you might stab me in the back. I just took the risk. I didn't even think it was a risk at that time, but he told me, like, why did you pick me up when so many people did? I just said, like, hey, if you're going to stab me, it's well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Shashi, we're almost out of time. Is All right. Okay. So I think I'm going to finish by quoting two things. Uh, which is FDR's famous saying, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Very true. Even if you make a fool of yourself in front of 25 people here, that's fine. You have learned something out of that lesson. The same way with John F. Kennedy, and this is on my cube outside. There are risks and costs associated with the program of change. But the cost of not doing anything is much higher. I'm paraphrasing him. So, do something different. If you want to speak in public, didn't have, were too shy to tell Debbie, do it now. Thank you.